<laughs> Come on now. Here we go. Pull up your bootstraps. Here Fresh we go. County's Hardware and Garden Stores brings you Garage Logic Pat Podcast number 1250, Feb 21, 2024. 62 degrees on this day in 2017. That's the second day for 2017. Man, we caught a lucky break there. And 21 below on this day in 1873. Hail the flashlight, King. Hail you! And now, from the mayor's office above the boathouse on the east shore of Spoon Lake, it's Garage Logic with Chris Reavers manning Technology Corner, Kenny Olson from the Krabby Coffee Shop, John Hyde in the newsroom, and of course, the rookie. Here is your flashlight king, fireworks commissioner, and the keeper of common sense, your mayor, Joe Sushi. Yesterday, we uh, were drawn into a couple of John Phelan stories from the center of the American experiment. One on a uh, new law proposing stricter regulations for paint and one on stricter regulations for creating a new law regarding who can do what electrically in your own home. And is John with us? Hi, John. Hi there. Uh, the paint one might not be as bad as I initially thought. I can still go buy a gallon of paint, right? Uh, possibly. Um, <laughs> I mean, one of the things that you've got with this is that it's a whole lot of regulation that wasn't there before. Right. Um, it is going to impact you know, individuals. Um, but one of the things as well about this is it's very costly. If you look into the, I mean, it's 11 pages of this bill. It's a hefty bit of work. Um, but it, it establishes, you know, um, a whole kind of uh, apparatus in terms of uh, licensing and assessment. There's an awful lot of money required up front. And it's all stuff that just didn't exist before. What problem is this solving? But it, it it probably isn't. But it still it doesn't it doesn't impact my ability to paint my own den at home. Correct. Uh, well, I mean, it depends how much paint you're going to use for your den, really. Um, I on a case by case basis, I don't know. Um, but like I say, the, the problem with this is that this is going to. I mean. There's a reason that they're changing this. They wouldn't be bringing this whole thing in if nothing was going to change. Right. The fact that they're enacting this shows that something is definitely going to change. Do you think it's a, a serious proposed legislation, or is it an example of what takes place in the early days of the session when they feverishly write bills and hope some of them stick? Well, I, think, I don't think it's an either-or uh, proposition. I think with a situation like this, um, they wouldn't suggest them um, if they weren't so, you know, at least semi-serious about passing them, particularly with a bill like the paint one, for example. Like I say, it's 11 pages long. Yeah. Um, this isn't just something that somebody kind of dreamed up in five minutes. Right. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of thought gone into this. There's a lot of the drafting gone into this. Um, there's, uh, you know, it's going to require hiring a whole bunch of people to police this, um, to administer the exams that are going to have to be uh uh, sat and passed to become a, a lot, an authorized painter in the state of Minnesota. Um, so th there's clearly some push behind this from somewhere. Um, and, you know, that, that whoever's pushing it will push. I find it ironic that the uh, Senate majority leader is a woman named Erin Murphy. And her husband is a well-known and very successful house painter. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't think I, I'm not suggesting Aaron. Uh, she's not listed as among the bill's authors, but I did find that a bit of irony. Yeah, uh, I, I wasn't aware of that. Uh, the electricity bill. Uh, I, I, the way I'm now reading it, and emailers have helped uh, help me understand this in a way, and uh, that doesn't mitigate the uh, need for this, but. I can still change a light switch in my house. Apparently, I can't if my house is connected to other dwellings dependent on my work as an electrician. Does that sound proper? The key point of this, again, you know, I, I've had emails from people saying, well, but it's exactly the same. Well, it's not exactly the same. If it was exactly the same, why would they be bringing in a law to change things? Mm-hmm. So the fact that they're changing it tells you they're changing it. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's blatant and obvious. 
So if you look at the, the text of what's proposed now, what, what the, the, the bill as it currently stands says, and I quote in full, an owner shall not be required to hold or obtain a license under sections blah, blah, blah. That's all it says. Right. That is being repealed and replaced with something a lot longer and a lot more involved and a lot less clear. And there's a reason for that. And the reason for that is the very end point of the new proposed text, which says that you shouldn't, you don't have to get one of these licenses, quote, this is all new text, if the residential dwelling has a separate electrical service utility not shared with any other residential dwelling. Right. Now, that's almost no residential dwellings in Minnesota. Um, most residential dwellings are attached to the grid. Um, if it doesn't mean that, what does it mean? Damned if I know. I thought it meant uh, if I'm in a condo uh, building, for example, and I, uh, it, it might be understandable that my neighbor doesn't want me messing with my electricity on the off chance I follow up his. Well, but the thing is, the law doesn't say that. That's your interpretation right, of what it right. might possibly mean. Right. Um, it might mean something very different. Um, you know, this is, I mean, at the at very least, this is very badly drafted legislation that does mean that an awful lot of people in Minnesota are going to have to get licenses to do this work, <clears throat> to get licensed people to do this work. Here's what I took away from the electrical portion was if I, uh, just a regular dude with a regular job on the side, I own a couple of duplexes or a couple of houses that I rent out that I normally would do all the maintenance and work on, I would not be allowed to replace electrical components because I don't live in them. Is that a, a correct takeaway? Uh, that Again, that's part of it, um, but it's not all of it. Um, if you look at, like I say, if you look at the last bit of, le- of, of the wording on that legislation, you don't you you this you do not have the exemption. Remember the, the clear short language which exists now goes completely, and this becomes a lot more complicated. And it says at the end you do, you don't get one of these re, uh, re, uh, exemptions if the residential dwelling has a separate electrical service utility not shared with any residential dwelling. So again, it may mean that it may not. You know, we're all sat here trying to put the most positive spin on this bill, but. It may not mean any of that. John, I I think we've learned two things. One, uh, at the very least, this kind of legislation takes us deeper and deeper into a regulatory state. And two, if if it's painting and electricity today, what will it be tomorrow? Uh, that's exactly right. Um, I, I think this session is going to be a bit kind of quiet on the tax and spending front just because they kind of blew the lid off it last year. Mm-hmm. Um, but they will find other things to do, um, and that's what these bills are. Um, and I, I do think, you know, that you're going to see, see more and more of this. Um, and this is why I've proposed, and I've written about this on our website, a bill um, which would uh, mean that if you're bringing in the uh, regulations, you kind of get like a regulatory budget. So if you bring in a regulation, you have to get rid of an existing regulation. Um, and another uh, bill will be to, or another portion of the bill will be to sunset these things. So you bring in this regulation and it sunsets automatically out after, say, two years. And the only reason, the only way it renews is if somebody stands up and makes a compelling argument for uh, the regulation to stay. I think there's, there's no compelling argument for these regulations to exist in the first place. Um, so I find it very difficult to believe that somebody would be able to convince me to keep them. Uh, I love the idea of uh, a, a new regulation must result in an old one going away. I love that idea. Can you get anybody to write that bill? Uh, yeah, I mean, some some states do have bills like that. Um, I think Ohio, for example, you actually have to get rid of two regulations for every one you bring in. Mm-hmm. Um, there's other things you can do, so... Instead of bring, taking out a regulation, you get rid of a regulation or regulations uh, that are of equivalent kind of economic impact. I think that's kind of a bit involved. It becomes a lot more expensive to do that. And I think you're better off just yanking a regulation if you need to put one in. We uh, we always tell our listeners to uh, to check out the American Experiment website. I, I like what you're doing, and I can only conclude that you're going to keep it up during this session. 
Yeah, um, obviously, uh, as you may have seen in the news, things are kind of a bit hectic. Um, I, but I've been very impressed with, uh, and I pat ourselves on the back here, with how we managed to keep working. Um, yeah, are you all working from home? Uh, yeah, we are at the moment. Every now and then some people get together in a coffee shop. But yeah, um, but yeah no, it's, you know, you've got to keep going. You can't let people uh, stop well, you uh, with let's... nefarious means. Let's make it clear what you guys are talking about. If you're allowed to talk about it, let's tell everybody that don't know about the fire. Well, the center of the American Experiment offices were burned. Are we any closer to solving that, John? Uh, I Firstly, I, I'm, I'm not kept in, in the loop all that closely. Secondly, I mean, probably things I shouldn't say. Okay. Um, but, yeah, the, 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 the investigation is proceeding and it's being handled, you know, with, with, with admirable professionalism by the ATF and the FBI. Wonderful. Hi, John. You're a little bit tight-lipped on that one, eh? <laughs> <laughs> where, are yeah, you from, yes. where are you from, John? Uh, England originally. Mm -hmm. um, I've been here now seven years and I became a citizen last summer. Wonderful. We'll stay in touch. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Cheerio. Uh huh. <laughs> Thank you. Matthew, you gave him an Australian deal. Yeah, yeah. it, it was, was Australian. I know he's from England. really embarrassing, from Matthew. Oh, I know he's from England. Yeah. From the sounds of it, he hadn't been briefed on the uh, right on the fire situation. Jedi, right? Oh, I'm so used to hearing that accent uh, on car shows. I kept waiting for him to talk about brake horsepower. Quite right. <laughs> right. Quite right. And Aluminium. Yeah. <laughs> And for me, I expect him to talk guitars because all the English guys that were musicians, so, that's what I hear. rather busy schedule. What what we learn? <laughs> we learned that uh, uh, the painting bill is 11 pages long and there's something in there to snatch you. And the electric bill uh, probably would go a long way to uh, reining in uh, do-it-yourself handymen, depending on the situation they find themselves in. But what we also learned is, and we knew this yesterday, there's just no end to the regulatory intrusion that uh, a lot of these DFLers want to involve themselves in. Yes. Because what I gleaned from that conversation was, you know what they're trying to eliminate is, and this is not to take a shot at anyone that's licensed, that's union, that's that's got a great business. There's that a lot does of great things. union GLs. Sure. But my, what I gleaned from that was what they're trying to do is get the guy or gal who's doing this type of work but isn't paying the tax on it. They're just doing it even though they know what they're doing. Does that make sense? You're, no, you're introducing a new wrinkle that I'm interested in. Oh, I, oh. I have no idea what the tax situation is. No, I don't know how your mind works. Licensing fees is where you'd find that. No, but but okay. Chris. Your your neighbor Gary knows what he's doing, but he's he's doing it to you as a favor for a hundred bucks or whatever. I don't think I as bad as we are in this state, I don't think the state is worried about my neighbor providing me a hundred bucks worth of electrical work. Well, that's just it. How how are you going to police that? How, yeah, who's I mean, going to snitch? That's just unknown. Snitches get stitches. Although, you know, if you want me to go dark. Go dark. If you want me to go dark. Never go back. The camera the state will install in your house will know that. Correct. And then they can build a gun. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Because we're not going to have a police force in 10 years. Yeah. We're going to have the ideological enforcement Ooh. force. Yeah. Well, at, I, I just think what we learned is early in the session, we're seeing how these le some legislators spend their time. And uh, unbeknownst to me, out of whole cloth, they've come up with new ways to tinker with the use of paint, and they've come up with new ways to tinker with uh, running to the hardware store and buying some electrical components and, and working on your electrical system. And as the, as, the session, as the session marches on, if these bills survive and we deem it's worth taking another look at them, that's what we'll do. I'm still convinced that, it, it, and despite what John said, he said, well, they, they wouldn't have written this if it didn't mean something. I'm still convinced that at the beginning of a session, you've got legislators who maybe are young, they're new, they're trying to make a name for themselves. They're trying to write as many bills as possible. And testing the waters, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. And it all starts with paint. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, get, Hold get on. The, get the redhead over. What's no, your no, name no, again? No, no. <laughs> you want a mine or what? So you're just here for the pool. What's going on? I'm uh, driving, uh, as I'm driving along, hell? people will think I'm playing Pokemon. <laughs> Kid, I got this 
question for you. Yes. What? <laughs> what? Uh, it's upside down. Well, how do? Yeah, my, let me put my glasses on. Hey, 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 don't run away. Hang on. How does blue paint smell like red paint? Because it's blue. That's what they're trying to eliminate. That's yeah, a lot of confusion on that one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a lot of confusion. Yeah. Red paint. Yes, yeah. yeah, sir. Let me write this I can down. go under this bill as based as we as we know it. I can certainly go to the store and buy a gallon of paint. In fact, we talked to a guy earlier that said he doesn't think it will really affect his business all that much. And I'm getting, okay. you know, Montana, Oklahoma. I'm getting people weighing in. Uh, here's Rick Grosshong from Oklahoma who writes, the new bill for licensing electric work is poorly worded, maybe by design, but I think the key is in how specific the exemption is in specifying the work that can be done in your residence that will remain your residence after the work is done. So you can do the work in the house you live in, but if you have one or more rental properties or you are buying houses to flip, then you must hire a licensed electrician. This is a definitely uh, a nod to the unions. Uh, I, well, I have no particular animosity for it all. And will eliminate handyman electricians or those with multiple properties. That's my best interpretation based on 26 years of interpreting environmental regulations. I hope this dies in committee. But if not, garage logicians are always welcome in the free state of Oklahoma. That's an interesting uh, point, the free state of Oklahoma, free state of Texas or Florida. There are states where the legislatures are not this busybody. There, there are states I, really? where legislatures are taking care of the business that needs to be taken care of. And they probably don't have as many members. Yeah. Uh, uh, just a minute here. Uh, I have a note from uh, uh, Jeremy. I want to give you and the dummies a small ray of hope. I'm a 23-year-old living in rural Minnesota. I'm a huge fan of the show and a longtime listener. I recently went on a road trip to Florida, driving a gas-powered vehicle the entire way, giving it small gulps of sea foam every now and then. I would like to report that we had no difficulties finding places to refuel and could go almost 500 miles between stops. We made it down to Florida in a little over one day. Needless to say, this would not have been possible in a government vehicle. Along with that, I recently graduated from the failed academy of the University of Minnesota Morris to become a teacher. Numerous times in the failed academy, I had to bite my tongue and stay quiet just to get my degree and get out of there. I want to become a teacher so that I can make the changes in the schools that you call for daily. There are a few of us Gen Zers out here who don't want to see this country fall to pieces. Uh, one last thing that I had. I wanted to know if you had a chance to read the article on the new state education standards that were just approved. Uh, I have that coming up. I would love to hear your thoughts on it. Love the show. Jeremy from none of your damn business. Got it. Got <laughs> it. Right. Good town. Good luck to you, kid. You're doing the Lord's work if you want to take up teaching. And uh, the rest of these have to do with the paint and electricity, which we're going to let go for a while. huh? Okay. We're going to let the session uh, uh, continue its path. I want to, uh, we got a very nice mention in the, uh, in uh, Alpha, News. Alpha News today. They picked up, uh, as I'm, as I would have imagined someone would have, they picked up our interview with Arnie Carlson, in which Arnie said that he much regrets his initial support for Arnie Carlson. And I thought that was a very newsworthy, a newsworthy thing from a former governor to say that about the sitting governor. And then even more disconcertingly, how Arnie told us, Look, I've got calls into the guy, and he won't even return them. I can't, I, I, can't I can't talk to him. And uh, Alpha News did a piece on that. I think all news gatherers in the Twin Cities, if they were on the ball, 
might have done that. Uh, they could be letting their biases cloud their news judgment. They probably don't want to give that Garage happen. Logic a lot of credit for something. But it was nevertheless an important thing that Arnie said. I also have emails from people who thought Arnie at 89 sounded considerably more sharp than either Biden or Trump. <laughs> I'll say. 100%. Much more so, yeah. yeah considerably absolutely. more sharp yeah. than uh, Trump yep. or Biden. But uh, uh, GL kind of uh, muscled its way into the news there, didn't it? Yeah. Just muscled yeah, its good. way into the nice news. Nice job. All right. What am I doing? Was it Hank? You're I not. Hank wrote that. Let's introduce our new partnership here for the next couple of days. Fine. Our friends at the Frontline Foundation began as an attempt to help and support our fallen heroes, including law enforcement officers, firefighters, EMS, and the Minnesota National Guard. They provide support to those who died while in the line of duty by giving benefit payments to dependents of fallen first responders. In addition to providing endowment and support for the families of fallen heroes, the F Frontline Foundation will underwrite scholarships and training registration costs for frontline personnel, as well as support preparedness training for safety, officers in hospitals, schools, and places of worship. <laughs> There's going to be a banner attached to our website, garagelogic.com, that people can click to donate. The banner is going to be active through next Sunday night, beginning at... 9 a.m. Uh, excuse me, beginning at 9 a.m. today. It's just another easy way uh, to phrase it would be go online, garagelogic.com. I'm sorry, I'm just reading the That's clip okay. notes from Roscoe. Well, you know what you could do? Slow down. Slow down. Can I, I, know. Yeah, go could ahead. you take a breath here? I want to tell you something. There was an article in the Star Tribune today about assaults against police officers. I'm holding it here now. Um, reported assaults against officers across Minnesota are up 160% from wow. a decade ago. Officers have reported at least 3,400 assaults in Minnesota since 2021. So there is a real, real need for Frontline right now, a well, real not, need. Not, not only is that a result of uh, Mysterians demonizing law enforcement, it's a result of just... This country's terrible problem with the lack of moral and ethical clarity and just respecting authority and just respecting your fellow citizens. They go on to say later in the article they're blaming some of it on COVID-19 along with anti-police sentiment, staffing crisis, and uh, major law enforcement agencies arise, uh, uh, oh, a rise in gun ownership. Blame, you know, and uh, blame COVID. We got to stop blaming crap on I, COVID. I absolutely agree, and that's why I read that because I wanted that reaction out of you. If you are not familiar with the Frontline Foundation and are questioning their street creds, which you should not be, uh, one of their board members is Senior Commander Tim Flynn uh, from the St. Paul. Police and so, Department. what Wonderful. we want to do is replenish their um, their back stock of cash here. Because uh, they're giving right. out a lot of money to these three families, and we want to help them recover that money so they can continue doing it for other families affected by this. And I don't care how much. Think about that. Uh, you still have to feed the kids. You still have to go to the grocery store. You still have to pay the electrical bill. And there's a lot. Life just keeps going on after this whole huge weight tragedy that you have so every you, every dollar helps all we're asking is to make an effort you know and it could like matthew just said it could be five bucks it could be five thousand whatever just please make the effort that's what we're asking here uh, just at the website garagelogic.com thank you there's a new way to level up your sports watching experience join over a million fans across 33 states who got in the game last year by making picks on underdog you can win up to 1,000 times your money just by choosing higher or lower on your favorite players stats like touchdowns passing yards and more i find it easy and fun to use while rooting for my favorite players making picks on underdog is straightforward signing up even easier just head over to underdog simple to use mobile app or underdogfantasy.com sign up with the promo code garage logic and underdog will give you a free pick to use on your first cash pick em entry, plus up to $1,000 in bonus cash when you deposit. That's Underdog Fantasy promo code GARAGELOGIC to claim your new customer special of a free pick and your deposit offer. Must be 18 plus, 19 plus in Alabama and Nebraska, 19 plus in Colorado for some games, 21 plus in Massachusetts and Arizona, and present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Void in Colorado. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.ncpgambling.com. 
1-800-NEXT-STEP.org. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP, 1-800-639-8783, or text Next Step to 53342. In New York, call the 24-7 Hope Line at 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. Not a Garage Logic Town Council member? Here's what you're missing. You know who you kind of remind me of, Joe, especially today? One of those snobs that lives over in Great Britain that just poo-poos everything American. Wow. Really? Yeah. Tay-Tay, football parties. You not like happiness, Joe? Matthews, what is parties. Morons. <laughs> An all-American football hero. Yeah. <laughs> of America's sweethearts. Yeah. I mean, they're literally the the royalty of the United States of America, and you hate half of I got to give her credit. When she slugged down that beer on the scoreboard, that was pretty cool. She can drink a beer. That was pretty cool. Go behind the scenes of Garage Logic with unfiltered audio and video access, invites to exclusive events, an emailed newsletter from the mayor himself, and more by signing up at garagelogic.com. Here's a man who spends hours in hardware stores, sifting through the nuts and bolts of life. Joe Souchere. Johnny, would that qualify as a fart base? Uh, I'm not sure what that means, but okay, I'll go with that. Sure. Okay. Well, it's kind of, kind of that. <laughs> well, I think you're talking about slapping. Oh, slapping. Slapping yeah. on the fart base. Okay. No slapping going there. Okie dokie. Uh, I tell you what, uh, let's uh, let's transition. February is the month of love. Yes. You got 30 seconds. I got you, babe. Uh, when's the last time you gave your carpet the love and attention it really deserves, Never. Joe? Never. Have you gotten down on your hands and knees and adored how no. clean and refreshed it was? No. All right. Well, I should do you that. You should do that. But tell you what, every six months, uh, once a year, you should get that carpet professionally cleaned and zero res, they're the people that can do it professionally, quickly, efficiently. Now, the windows are still going to be shut. Even though it's 50 degrees, you're not opening up those windows. So you're going to be stuck inside breathing all this stuff. Call Zero Res for the Love Your Rug special. Zero Res has over 17,000 Google reviews, a 4.9 rating, and they can get three rooms, zero resified, starting at just $119, and they'll throw in a free hallway. Dirt and dander, get rid of it. This month, take 75 bucks off when you get your air ducts zero res clean. Call zero res right now at this number, 952-Z-E-R-O-R-E-Z, or go online to zeroresminnesota.com and tell them you want the rookie Love Your Rug special. Also, call today for your commercial cleaning estimates if you own a business. The pros at zero res can do it all, spelled forward or backward. <laughs> it's spelled the same, Z E R O R. Z. Zero res. You done? Zero res can also do. <laughs> I'm to be concerned or I'm to be uh, worried apparently about uh, Minnesota's social study standards. Uh, there's another piece from the American Experiment by Caitlin Wigfall writing about this. I'm. I'm. Uh, somebody will have to help me. What am I worried about? Uh, I don't. I don't trust anything the failed academy does. They're promoting I, for they're promoting an agenda <clears throat> that's favorable to the left and to socialism. And the reason why we're shocked by this is because they hired an independent auditor, um, put up a great deal of money for this study. The study told them the truth and told them where they were wrong and how this new social studies program was um, wrong or erroneous, whatever you want to say. And they decided to go ahead and f go forward anyway, despite the... After a multi-year revision process, the Minnesota Department of Education's new K-12 social studies standards have been approved and will now go to district and charter schools for implementation into classrooms statewide. The final stamp of approval, despite overwhelming public opposition for three years, what difference does the public make? These people are on the third rail. Was given after MDE made minor changes to an ethnic study standard that administrative, administrative law judge Eric Lipman deemed unduly vague. But Lipman should have applied this same reasoning to the entire set of social study standards covering economics, geography, history, citizenship, government, and ethnic studies. Uh, I, I, nothing would surprise me what they're up to. I'm sure it's all DEI-based. I put no faith 
in the Minnesota Department of Education. I put no faith in whatever these standards are. So what 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 do people want from me? I I, I condemn them without knowing what they are. How, how about that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the history, are, are the, I think the problem is with the, the topic, the subject altogether, the class altogether. I mean, you could debate if social studies is, in fact, good or if it's an easy way out um, because they're combining so many things, history, government, economic, like you said, and the effects thereof of uh, on the populace. It's so they another, can always, it's another they can, course they designed that uh, to move yes. kids along because you can't flunk this. You oh, can't. Well, it's a course designed to prove their end goals, basically their political agenda. That's the way I see it. And I'd love to be told uh, told uh, otherwise. Would somebody look up District 6, John, in Minneapolis mm-hmm. in terms of school board representation? What is District 6? What neighborhood does that represent, I wonder? Uh, I did not have a chance to do that this morning. District 6. Because speaking of, uh, I don't trust any of them. The uh, head of the school union in Minneapolis is running for the school board in District 6, where she says, I'm a parent of a student in District 6. I went to school in District 6. I grew up in District 6. This would be Greta Callahan. Uh, She's the president of the Minneapolis Federation of Teachers. She's running for a seat on the Minneapolis School Board, and uh, I'm just wondering if she will uh, advertise her anti-capitalist beliefs, which she made very public when she was leading the strike last year. Uh, if you, if you uh, uh, residents of Minneapolis uh, want your kids uh, with that kind of representation on the school board, uh, that's that's your business. I think you're... You'd be wise to uh, find somebody else to vote for, but and she, that's not hyperbole. She, she said that into a microphone at at well, the at yeah, a rally. I was a, in a quote exactly what Joe said. Yeah, yeah exactly what he said. So we're we're here to defeat capitalism, Correct. I believe. And yeah. this is yep. this is typical mm-hmm. of what's happening to the failed academy because the failed academy is is a strong uh, fighting wing of the mystery which intends to destroy this country for purposes of reinventing it to their own likeness. And uh, I wouldn't trust this Callahan as far as I could throw her, but Minneapolis continues to uh, participate in its own demise. I wouldn't be surprised at all if she wins. Is that conflict of interest for her, or is it a dream? Uh, presumably she'd have to leave. She's a kindergarten teacher. I don't know how much damage she can do to kindergartners, but I think there's a salary limit. You you can't make, I thought I read that she'd have to leave here. The union is in negotiation. Okay. Oh, here it is. Callahan has been on leave from her role as a Minneapolis kindergarten teacher to serve as the union's teacher chapter president. I'm sure she's still getting paid by the taxpayers. If elected to the school board, she'll have to vacate that job by law. School board members cannot make more than $20,000 on the side as an employee of the district. So if she gets this gig, uh, apparently a school board member makes more than twenty grand. A school board member? Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. Well, let me read it again. And that's a part-time if, job. If elected to the school board, she'll have to vacate the teacher's job because school board members cannot make more than $20,000 as an employee of the district. Maybe that means school board members are limited to an income of $20,000. I'm reading it the other way because it said cannot make more than. That's the phrasing you used. Yeah, yeah, and I'm jumping to the in addition con- to. Well, I'm jumping to the conclusion that a school board member, in addition to the school board salary, can make nineteen thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars. Well, I'm going to stay out of it because yesterday I introduced math and you got mad at me. So well, I'm, I don't want you to. That's why I'm staying out of it. So, 
Her son goes what to South... What difference does it make? The important part is you got a communist who wants to be on the school board. So her son goes to Southwest High School. So my guess is District 6 is would be the... Nice area of town. 35 West and East of 35W with the border being possibly Minnehaha Parkway. Whatever. It's... Are school boards traditionally in bed with the unions, or are they frequently opposed to one another? I would imagine in a, in a in a day of rational behavior by all citizens, school boards were able to be a a, a, a temper on a tamper down on school on unions. School boards might have been in place to keep things under control. If I'm reading the the tea leaves correctly, I think. School boards and school uh, teachers' unions are very much aligned now. Yeah. She's just floating from three different clouds here. Teacher, right, right. union leader, school board. Right. I, I don't think there's much to see. When I look at the makeup of school boards, I, I find no one who has any garage so, logicianship whatsoever. It, it's just all one big giant group think yes. tank. Yes. Yeah. Well, just to prove your point, I have a mole that uh, he is, works in St. Paul at one of the schools, and he said, this is a post from our school board member. This is in St. Paul, Chantil Allen. Chantil Allen is the <laughs> woman who fomented the false racial confrontation at a Japanese restaurant two years ago and then put the word out on social media for her friends to join her at the restaurant so they could make news. I remember that. Listen, I turned 50 this year, and I'm heading to Hawaii on March 6th for my birthday. We're going to need to get this teacher's contract figured out now. I heard Anoka is going to have to lay off 300 employees because of their negotiations. I'm not trying to let none of y'all go anywhere. Matter of fact, I want to increase some departments to provide stronger academic outcomes and hefty classroom supports. Willing to head back to the state for those plans, but need to hold on y'all right now. I feel like we get five steps forward and then something happens and it pushes us three steps back. This bleep is exhausting. I'm starting to believe public schools are just what they are. Underfunded with mediocre instruction. Don't be offended by the word mediocre. Look at the proficiency rates. It's just a shame that someone that unqualified is on the school board. Yeah. It's just a... If people were capable of sadness in their life, they would be sad about this. I'm convinced that just too many people have either given up or don't pay attention. And they many, just don't care. And too many people would look at what Rookie just said and see that as progress or change. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to Hawaii. This woman Ooh. is corrupt as the day is long. We've allowed dumb people to enter into the discussion. That's the problem. And they're bringing down the level of discourse Lowest. down to their... Their level. Lowest common denominator. And they're getting so emboldened that a communist like Callahan, uh, and I'm not taking that word lightly, she's admitted as much, uh, that they're so bold that they run on, on the fact that they're attacking capitalism. And they'll, and I, she'll win. And if that gal that Matthew just quoted, if she heard me, refer to her as a dumb pe a dumb person being allowed into the discussion, she would come back and tell me it's due to racism yep. instead of actually wanting to discuss the issue at hand. No, she she's would, an idiot. She's an idiot. Well, she is an idiot, but she would say that we're saying that because she's black or whatever her heritage may be, and, and we just don't care. School don't care boards. who you go to bed with. Don't care what color your skin is. None of that matters. Like many, many other traditions and conventions in the country that are getting destroyed, the school boards are a classic example. I, I got to think there was a time, and, you know, the elephant in the room would have been, they would have been white people probably. But there was a time when I suppose that was a very honored and noble act of public service to be on the school board and make sure that they were getting decent instruction and made sure that, they had the funds to buy the proper school books and such and such school needs new microscopes. And they were they were on top of all this and they were probably engaged with parents and they Thank themselves you. would have been parents of 
of school children in the schools. And today, like city councils and, and state legislature, it merely is attracting an activist class who are not there to worry about microscopes. Yeah. They're there to worry about equity, yeah, yeah, which it's a they social, don't understand. A social agenda, yeah. diversity, equity, inclusion. Right. Yeah, and you could say that about every political body basically in the United States, and I would have no argument with you whatsoever. Absolutely. School boards, state legislators, city councils, Congress, presidency, everything. They're drifting yep. farther and farther away from the citizen. We've lost what has made this country a, a superpower, a place to be envied around the world. We've lost the media. We've lost the universities. We've lost political parties. We're being told to believe things that aren't true, things that we see with our own eyes. We're being asked to disbelieve that. We've lost control, Joe. The reckoning has happened. We've it lost, is happening. Uh, we've lost a lot of personal pride, too. Many of our streets are pathetic, and we have infrastructure falling okay. down. And Okay, I have to be positive for a second. I read a piece <laughs> about your guy in St. Paul, Sean, the public works guy. He went out and got himself qualified to drive a plow truck. That's what we need from government. In my tiny little town, every time it snows, the mayor is in a plow truck doing it. We need that on your level, you on the St. Paul, Minneapolis level. Sean Kershaw is the director of public works in St. Paul. You guys want him on the air? Yeah, I love this guy. I want to talk to I him. I want to Hell talk yes. to him, too, because you know what strikes me about him? Of all the public employees, and I'm including council people, he seems to enjoy this. He seems to not be afraid to get out front and say, last year he was out front and said, if there's a plowing screw up, it's my fault. And he And now he's driving a truck. He figured he, out how to drive the plow truck. No, he's qualified. he's qualified. He went out and got himself qualified. Like the mayor and, or anybody else would just do a photo op. This guy, if they need him to drive a plow truck, He's he doing can exactly do it. Exactly what a GLer would do. Yes, if a yes. GLer was the director of yeah. public works in a major yep, city, yep. I couldn't you'd, care what you'd his play politics with the are. stuff. Yes, yeah. You'd drive the truck. You'd, you'd you'd play with the like if I was president. Put me on an aircraft carrier for a couple of days. I want to see how stuff works. Do do the job. F yep, figure it out. Yep. Danny, I'd like to congratulate you. Because what? I don't know if any of you noticed this, but you have rubbed off on the mayor. He just used the phrase, drive plow truck. <laughs> did I really? Wow. You really did. Did I? I you uttered that oh, phrase. Oh, I'm so ashamed. <laughs> I'm so ashamed. I, think, I actually I think it's, said that. Uh, I think it's a perfect day for me to retire. <laughs> See ya, <you>, boys. <laughs> as soon as you said it, my ears went, what? Drive a plow truck. <laughs> Drive a plow truck. <laughs> Drive a plow truck. I've told you my garage door guy is not just the guy. It's the whole family. Minnesota family-owned business and veteran-owned precision garage door of the Twin Cities in western Wisconsin. A couple of interesting points that distinguishes them from the, uh, the nest of garage door people out there. Uh -huh. It's a tough, competitive business. Why do they stand out? They don't charge more for weekends. And most often... I can't say every time because I don't know what they'll run into. But most often, they got what they need in the truck. They don't give you that song and dance about, oh, shoot, I got to run back to the shop. Who's bringing and, the truck, Oh, Freddy? and when I'm there, yeah, I'm going to have to clock out because my time. No, they finish the job on done. the day they're assigned to finish the job, and they keep you informed of what they're up to. They'll text you and say, we're 15 minutes out, whatever. They're they're good people. They know how to do everything, the rollers, the springs, the openers, and, of course, a new garage door in the event you need a garage door. Uh, it's a GLR-owned business, PrecisionDoorMN.com. That's PrecisionDoorMN.com. Or put this telephone number in your contacts. You know you're going to need it sooner or later. Precision Door, 612-263-6985. Fighting the demagogues of diversity. It's Joe Suchere. Uh Jason writes, good morning, Kenneth. I had a 2014 Ford Explorer being a complete basket case and almost undrivable at 170,000 miles because on acceleration it would shake you out like it was misfiring. He replaced all the plugs, the coils, and nothing changed. 
Well, he thought, hmm, maybe it's the transmission. After two cans of Seafoam Transtune, that thing drives like brand new, truly unbelievable. Jason, I wish I would have, uh, you, you would have called me before you bought the Explorer. The people in the know call the old Ford Explorers exploders uh, due to their uh, transmission problems. I had two uh, Explorers in my lifetime and four transmissions oh <laughs> but that God. really shows you wow. the miracle yeah yeah it was uh, it took a while for me to Ford learn sponsorship learn uh, <laughs> learn my lesson on that one but that proves what a miracle drug transtune is for your ride we can use that thing uh, transtune in our vehicles it keeps the transmission shifting and running smoothly we can also use it in the power steering if that's acting weird a true miracle you can learn all about it at seafoamworks.com, an excellent uh, advice website from the experts. And Transtune, just like the Deep Creep and the Top Engine Cleaner and the uh, the engine treatment, it's all available for purchase almost everywhere. It's our own local company with a global reach, a true miracle in a world of bad gas, Seafoam. Here's John Height. Thanks, Joe. Uh, this news brought to you by North American Banking Company, and I must you know, defend Explorer's Honor, Kenny. I'm sorry. I had one to 225,000 miles. It was great. Sold it what for year? five grand. What year? 20, 2010 uh, Eddie Bauer Ford Explorer. It was wonderful. It was my favorite I, car ever, actually. I couldn't believe my bad luck. I, I thought Joe, somebody hated me. Did you just FYI a Seafoam man? Well, no, no I'm not. No, it's, it's got it's, nothing to do with Seafoam. No, he's do defending the Explorer. The, the Explorer. I got you. I had a 2000 that Chris I bought from America. I wish I had you. a hand grenade right now. <laughs> really? Would you eat it? I would blow this. Would you like an M&M? No, I but don't the, want But the M&M. two guys talking are, are not with you, so you just blow yourselves up and we'd be sitting here laughing. Right. So. Yeah, they get their last laugh, Joe. You blew yourself up. <laughs> Let's talk news, Joe, shall we? I think so. <laughs> I think I'll tell you once again that it's brought to you by North American Banking Company. Still? In the... In the news, union workers at seven nursing homes in the Metro announced Tuesday they plan to go on a one-day unfair labor practices strike. They say they'll walk off the job for 24 hours two weeks from now on March 5th. Union members with SEIU Healthcare Minnesota and Iowa and UFCW 663 are looking for a $25 minimum wage, affordable health care, and pensions. Teresa Breeze, an employee at Estates of Roseville, she said during a news conference yesterday, short staffing has never been worse for us and it's hurting workers and residents. Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley announced she'll be making a stop in Minnesota next week as part of a cross-country blitz of Super Tuesday states. Haley's campaign announced the former U.N. ambassador and South Carolina governor will hold an evening campaign event at the Doubletree in Bloomington on Monday, February 26th. Haley Doubletree? The Doubletree, yeah. (laughs) Haley said yesterday those expecting her to drop out of the race are wrong. Addressing a campaign rally in Greensville City, the former South Carolina governor reiterated she is, quote, not going anywhere and will continue her bid, in her words, till the last person votes after speculation that she could drop out of the race soon. He's going to be in the uh, Hopalong Cassidy suite of the Gene Autry Hotel. Yeah, well, that's, I was, uh, are, what are you uh, suggesting, Matthew? Maybe they should call Zero Res over there? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Get her cleaned up before. Huh? I've seen Green maybe. Shag. <laughs> yes. What's better, that or the, uh, the, the Four Seasons rally? Where... Oh, with uh, Giuliani? Oh. Yeah. Gosh. Four Seasons yeah. lawnscaping. Right. Police say one person is dead after being hit by a bus during the overnight hours in St. Paul's Highland Park neighborhood. According to Metro Transit Police, the crash happened just before 1245 a.m. at the intersection of McAllister Street and Ford Parkway. The agency says the bus was headed east on Ford Parkway when a male pedestrian crossed in front of the bus. Life-saving attempts were provided, but the person died at the scene. The driver is currently on administrative leave as the crash investigation continues, which Metro Transit says is standard procedure. Uh, No other information and the identity of the pedestrian not provided immediately. That's a wide open area. McAllister and Ford Parkway. Nobody in Highlands up that late. Right. A North St. Paul woman sentenced on Tuesday in connection with a drunken driving crash that killed her ex-husband. 53-year-old Bobby Joe Brown received a stayed sentence in connection with the crash. For the criminal vehicular homicide charge, she got a sentence of almost five years, but that sentence 
will be stayed for the duration of her five-year probation. She was also sentenced to serve 58 days in Dakota County Jail, but had credit for 58 days already served. The sentence for the criminal vehicular homicide charge will be served concurrently with two criminal vehicular operation charges. She also must serve 100 hours of community service and electronic alcohol home monitoring, as well as pay fees. She will also pay restitution, but the amount has not yet been determined. Uh, it sounds like she really turned her life around, and that's the reason for this um, departure, mm-hmm. right? Yep. The Old Log Theater in Excelsior is closing. In a post on Facebook, owners Greg and Marissa Frankenfield announced the theater will discontinue productions and the cast and crew restaurant in the same building will close. The last show will be held March 2nd. Touted as the Upper Midwest's first professional theater, it originally opened in 1940, added a new theater in 1960 to start a year-round operation. Theater featured main stage productions of contemporary plays and musicals, as well as children's show productions. The owners encouraged anyone with outstanding gift cards to use them through March 2nd. After that, they can get refunds in the form of a check. Among those in the past who performed there include actors Nick Nolte, Steve Zahn, and Lonnie Anderson. Can oh, you imagine, Steve Zahn. Can you imagine yeah. what that property must be worth? If I'm not mistaken, it's lakefront. Is Which it I think you're right from what I yeah, right. today. Yeah, so we're not arist- a property. We're not aristocrats, so we don't think like that. Uh, what we do think about though wow. is bars, and this theater story reminds me of something I saw on, on the back page of today's variety section in the Star Tribune. Did you see it, Joe? Bunch of dumpy bars. A place for our next <laughs> appearance: the Anoka Hardware Store Speakeasy. Well, I did see that. Yeah. That oh, looks sure. really yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be a fun place to do a, a GL. Um, Maybe a town well, council. Well, there'd, there'd have to be a reason, Kenny. Uh, we just wouldn't go there just for the hell of it. Just show up. Well, you, you know what a good reason is? A good reason is it's about a five minute drive for John. That's oh. a good reason. Okay. <laughs> have you been there, John? I have not. I know where it's at, but I've not been there. I've heard good things about it, though. Well, it's kind of neat. Evidently, you walk in the door and it's got a hardware store feel to it, and then there's another door that takes you into the bar itself. Well, can you exactly. buy a broom there, a rake? And I mean, is it literally there, a hardware store? No, there's no hardware store there. No. Oh, God, you're such a buzzkill. Why, why don't we? Uh, I, I didn't mean to be note. a buzzkill. Is it the, it's, it so it's not like the naturally. NAC hardware and lounge. Because right. at the NAC hardware and lounge, you can buy, you know, masking tape or whatever no, you but need. The, but but this is a real place, Joe. No, why I know. Don't we take a break? But, Rook, you found a real NAC hardware and lounge. That was in uh, Hill. South Dakota, I think. Yeah, they had beer and uh, brooms. Yep, you could go, <laughs> and you can go to the Garage Logic YouTube page and check out the video of me getting to right. a tour of that. Right, it's a great place. You so, can check out any time you want. You just can't leave. <laughs> can't get out there right, used though. to be a club in Columbus, Ohio, that was a laundromat and a bar. Really, that was a pretty cool place. Can I wash wow. my jeans there? Yes, you could actually. Well, yeah. it's a good idea. You can go have a drink while you're waiting. It for was your close laundry. to campus, yeah. and it was a real neat room. Were I you enjoyed doing myself. colors or whites? <laughs> Do it all at the Do same time. Do you know where time. I like to hang out? Dummy. I can tell you where you're going to be hanging out. Well, maybe I'll have to apply for a job with North American Banking Company. Uh-huh. I was just there yesterday talking to my guy, Mike. Uh, we're running the numbers currently as we speak. Here's why I like dealing with North American Banking Company. I get a person, a face-to-face conversation, and they know my situation personally. They know kind of what I want to do financially. That's why they are the best. I got tired of dealing with my big national bank, and I made the switch. And that's what they founded this company on back in 1998. They made a promise to deliver a better banking experience for their customers, where you know your banker, and they know you. And while a lot has changed since then, this commitment to being a true community bank in the Twin Cities, that has not. I went into my Roseville location, but you can also see North American Banking Company at 50th in France, Hastings, Woodbury, Shoreview, and their new location in Maple Grove. They offer the same online and mobile banking options as the other banks, but you're going to get that great service of a community bank. They are also locally owned and operated, and that means loan decisions are made right here in the Twin Cities. They don't send those out of state. So this helps business owners solve problems quickly and expand their business with confidence. Joe, nabankco.com is the website, nabankco.com. It's banking done differently. North American Banking Company member FDIC is an equal housing lender. Cha. One one minute and a half. 
<laughs> it's time to play Love in a Hardware Store. <laughs> well, it's time to play Love, but it's Love of People, and that is where Minnesota Masonic Charities come in. Their website is mnmasoniccharities.org. If you click on that uh, website, you'll find all sorts of different tabs. The services they offer, the philanthropy, the leadership, and then the scholarships. And that's what I want to talk to you about today, briefly during this 37 seconds that I have. Uh, The (laughs) deadline for the 2024 scholarships is February 29th. They've given over 13 million scholarships to date, and they have their Selfless Scholar Award. I would love for you to learn more about it. Because the recipient, whoever is nominated, the, whoever nominated them, they split the pot on that. So it's a win-win situation. So check out mnmasoniccharities.org. Click on the scholarship tab and poke around their website. They've got all sorts of great stuff. They're a wonderful outfit that started in 2006 when they all came together. mnmasoniccharities.org. Click on scholarships. In national and international news, two men have been charged with murder and other crimes in connection with that shooting at the parade following the chief Super Bowl victory that left one person dead and 22 injured. Uh, Missouri prosecutors said yesterday Dominic Miller and Lindell Hayes both face charges, including second degree murder, two counts of armed criminal action and unlawful use of a weapon. Miller and Mays are each being held on one million dollars bond. The shooting, as we all know, began around two in the afternoon of February 14th in a crowd of more than one million people. Uh, we're celebrating the Chiefs win. More than 20 people aged 8 through 47 suffered gunshot wounds in the shooting. Mays was in a verbal argument, apparently, with another person with whom he had no prior connection. Jackson County Prosecutor Gene Peters Baker said at a news conference yesterday the argument quickly escalated to Mays drawing a handgun. Almost immediately, other people, including Miller, pulled out handguns, too. One witness said a group of people approached Mays and another person, and they began arguing about why they were staring at each other. According to Kansas City Police Chief Grant Spiking, Mays allegedly admitted to shooting first and firing two shots. Uh, Miller estimated he fired four to five shots and told police he probably shouldn't have pulled a gun out. Oh, probably Hmm. not. That's why you just keep your mouth shut and you walk away. Did any of them have permits? Uh, is that uh, is is not noted. I don't know. Both actually were hit, both these fellows, mm-hmm. and both have been in the hospital since. Uh, the new charges come after two juveniles were charged with gun-related and resisting arrest charges and held in the Jackson County Juvenile Detention Center last week. Uh, the police say the investigation is still ongoing and prosecutors seek to hold every shooter accountable. In fact, saying they expect more people to be charged before before all of this is done. The police chief saying, quote, we are not done yet. So uh, it was like one of those scenes in a movie where all the bad guys are standing in a circle pointing guns at each other, basically, <laughs> mm-hmm. right? That's a a gunfight, yeah. The, bunch uh, of dumb yeah. meatheads. Two things. The Mays family has started a GoFundMe, one of the oh, bad God, guys. Really? They have. Uh, and the other thing, John, and I... The thing about John, John and I disagree, but John and I still love each other. John, you were wrong yesterday. These two, you said that these two were juveniles. I had asked, well, how come we don't know the names of the Kansas City people yet? And I know there had to be an investigation. We know now. We know now. But the other part is, and several people had emailed in that Kyle Rittenhouse was 17 at the time of that incident. And and in Wisconsin. And and was charged as an adult, right? Is that the difference? In Wisconsin, if you read the law, they identify shooters at the age of 17. Right. And I'm just in Kansas City and Missouri, they don't. Because several so people you had clarified weighed that in on you that. were wrong, yes. <laughs> no, I wasn't they, wrong. I you wasn't can't, wrong. In Kansas City and Missouri, you can't identify the juveniles. In Wisconsin, you can at the age of 17. That's the law. That's the difference. It's just like Minnesota. They won't identify a juvenile, unfortunately. What are you even talking. arguing I'm about? Stop you talking because Joe's head's about to explode. I don't know what you're talking what? about. Who's I, I, about to explode? I stay home during riots. That's what I do. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. 
What, Let's what about go, that one? John. I know, but I wanted to see if Chris had any comment on no, that. I don't want him um, to. Pro, pro Palestinian groups at Harvard University, God. including one comprised of faculty and staff, reignited the controversy over campus anti Semitism over the long weekend when they posted an anti Semitic cartoon on their social media accounts. The cartoon, which dates to the 1960s and was condemned when it was first published, shows a hand inscribed with a star of David and a dollar sign holding ropes around the necks of an Arab man and a black man. Interim Harvard President Alan Garber condemned it as being flagrantly anti-Semitic in a message to the Harvard community Tuesday evening. The cartoon was included in a social media post Sunday by two Harvard student activist groups, the Palestinian Solidarity Committee and the African and African American Resistance Organization. Additional student groups and a pro-Palestinian faculty and staff group later posted the graphic on their own accounts. Uh, the matter is being referred to the Harvard College Administrative Board, which handles disciplinary proceedings for students and sanctioned student groups like the Palestinian Solidarity Committee. No word if they'll suffer any consequences because of this. Streaming news, Walmart is buying budget TV manufacturer Vizio for $2.3 billion Ooh. as the retail giant seeks new frontiers for its advertising business. The nation's largest retailer said the deal will give its Walmart Connect and advertising division new ways to reach customers through in-home media and additional revenues to grow profits. That acquisition could make Walmart a bigger presence in the TV streaming wars, especially if they buy a streaming service. Meanwhile, Fubo TV, a live TV streaming platform, has launched a civil lawsuit against Disney, Fox, and Warner Brothers Discovery, alleging the media companies have engaged in anti-competitive practices. Yes, sir, in the back. So they bought Vizio. That's correct. Is that a television manufacturer? Yes. Yeah. So they bought a TV company that makes TVs. Uh-huh. What's yeah. that got to do with a streaming service? Well, they, if they buy a streaming service, then all Vizio TVs would come equipped with that, and they can run ads and make money from those, just like Roku does now. Oh, uh, I in see. fact, they, they would be the main competitors. Oh, I Roku, see. Uh -huh. If that happens, so they could run ads. I don't think money. you do see, Joe. I see. You got oh, a color I see. set? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I see. I see. I don't think you do see. Uh, uh, Fubu. Uh, the, uh, yeah. 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 But you could go to Best Buy and buy a Vizio TV. Vizio, I, Phillips, sure. Sony. Yeah. I mean, yep. and I that, that so. will continue. But it, at some point, uh, you will be buying a TV manufacturer that's owned by Walmart. Correct. I got yes, it. I exactly. See. Yep. I see. Uh, Fubu in their suit says, "We remember we told you about the thing last week where all the, the companies are getting together to make one big sports streaming sure, server. Sure, that's why Fubu is suing. They're okay. saying it's yeah, uh, it's sure. got to be an antitrust deal. Yep, sure. That's it. Uh, is this weird or or is it just me? Scientists have successfully grown working testicles in a dish that could one day help oh. solve male infertility." <laughs> Affects one in twelve. You just men put them in a one. dish. Put them in a dish. Like a, are they at Mar-a-Lago? Where are they? Yeah. <laughs> Who is are they? Are they Amers? <laughs> They're not anybody's. That's what I don't get here. Oh. They, <laughs> they made them. They, they made them. Yeah. They just made them out of nothing, huh? Researchers at Bar Ilan University in Israel produce tiny organoids. Oh, artificial ones. Those are the kind the of Republicans have. The little yeah, teeny you don't want to call them teeny. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> artificial. Miniature organs that closely mimic the structure and function of natural testicles. Well, I'll be damned. It's about time. Huh. The, <laughs> the lab-grown organs, cultured from cells sampled from mouse testes, formed small hey, tubules. I don't want no mouse how nuts. What, what kind of volumes? How, how big can oh, they be? Right, right. <laughs> what kind of volumes oh. are they capable of in a given 24-hour period, John? Well, who wants mice uh, units? I, 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 if they're working, you I, know. I don't I, want mice units. Any port in the storm. No, not if it's mice. No, okay. No. Sci scientist says this gives you them develop a, a craving for cheese. Because <laughs> I'm thinking, could you bring them to that bank and just make cash all day long? Just keep walking in. <laughs> right, right. You know, there you go. How quick, well, how quick is the turnaround? Your room is ready, Mr. Olson. <laughs> yeah. fact, well, I'll be in, in here fact, for the next stay here for the day. 12 hours. Yeah. Get out the checkbook, make, pal. Uh, are they going to make the deal that goes with the, with the units? No, I, well, I don't think so. I 
I hope not. That doesn't I, come from a mouse. Scientists says a unique window into No, but it does it. come with a Ferrari. But hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Look out. Wow. I have yeah. to laugh. Anyway, anyway. That's, that's, well, I'm glad. Uh, like I say, it's about time. That's what the world needs to correct itself and right its path is uh, fake nuts. That'll solve <laughs> everything? Yeah, that'll solve okay. everything that's wrong. It'll okay. correct everything yeah. As, yeah. so long as you know there's a, a nut store yeah. where you can go get the new units. I want nut these. Store. I want So, these John, nuts. are they going to use them for artificial insemination? insemination? Well, they're, they're saying this is a very early window into the possibility of doing that, of treating disorders for folks who can't have kids. Well, think but, about it. You could now create from whole from scratch a, a kid. See uh, that? I don't think we can already yeah. do. I think you can already do that. No, but you need right now. You need a living Frankenstein. Hello, this happened a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's not get into the debate whether or not that's a good movie. God will be here all day. Uh, but now you need a donor in order to make a lab baby. But with this development, you wouldn't right? need a donor, right? Well, You'd have artificial. Right. This artificial. is the. This might be the final building block in AI taking over the world. And I don't like this AI stuff. Yeah, that's well, where we're at. Very nervous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do yeah. I know you're even real? I don't even know if I am. <laughs> well, I'm tripping balls so hard right now, I have no right. idea what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> These questions and more can be settled in Sioux Falls. Uh, we, you know, you get together with your new yeah. business down there, and they go, did you hear about the Israelis? They created some new uh, deals and uh, artificial. It solves everything. But the main thing you can solve in Sioux Falls is to move your business, if you're thinking of that, to just a better tax climate, uh, a better commute climate, safer streets, quality of life, excellence, productive people, affordable land, reduced red tape, fewer taxes, and higher profits. Now, maybe this is the time. Maybe 2024. Maybe you've got a lot of reasons you've been tallying up and you want to move your business or uh, start a new business and maybe you're going to look at sioux falls they've got a uh, you know what it is it's not so much a secret anymore it's a it's a great place that people are learning about and you can find out everything you need to know at SiouxFallsDevelopment.com. available buildings and build ready sites to get your company up running and fast super sioux, sioux falls development.com Latte schmate. Here's Joe Suchere. Lawmakers here in Minnesota uh, are taking up gun violence prevention bills Wednesday. Don't be hoodwinked. Huh. We have enough. We have enough gun laws. They're not using them. Groups uh, Protect Minnesota and Every Town says progress was made to fight gun violence, but there's still a lot of work to do. Let me cut to the chase. Face it. Uh, uh, and this comes to us. Am I bothering you? No. Okay. This comes to us from Alpha News, where we learn that over 40% of convicted gun crimes don't get mandatory minimum sentences. There's your problem. You, right? Huh? Yes. Yeah. You got the law there. Minnesota sees 912 felony cases a year in which a gun was allegedly used or possessed. In fiscal year 2023, there were 1,805 cases. But they're not getting punished because you also have the likes of Mary Moriality and a, and a Mysterian political class who look darkly on law enforcement. The oppressed versus the oppressor class. Don't let yourself be fooled by this constant hectoring, natter, nattering nabobs of negativism <laughs> who want more gun laws. We have millions. And on that, John, were you going to bring up Mary today with the expungement clinic? The that's expungement taking place clinic. Right now? Yeah. What's yeah, the expungement was, clinic? Go ahead, John. It's uh, a place for uh, felons to come and uh, find get information. It's like a, a, a seminar kind of thing to come to see how to get their old felonies expunged. <laughs> the, the, you raised this the is a everything is a joke. Everything is a joke with Stop the people that are in place. That's that's what Joe's saying. How are you supposed to be able to take any of this seriously? 
Well, the, be, go to the Alpha News and look this up. It's uh, it's quite evident that we have uh, many, many laws that aren't being used. Are they addressing the storage and, and locking up of firearms? Is that what they're doing? Because there is a separate bill that's been introduced in the House that wants to outlaw a whole lot of firearms right now. But that's not the problem. The problem is, I know for example, that. this this bad <clears throat> the Shannon Gooden, the fellow yeah. who shot the two coppers, and the yeah, firefighter I, in Burnsville. He, there is not a chance in hell he should have had a gun. But there's also every reasonable reason to think that he should have been in jail for his first gun offense. Yeah. And we're not doing that. You've got the laws, but the left is going to sell Minnesotans who don't pay attention and don't care. They're going to sell Minnesotans on the idea that we need more gun laws because that plays well if you're not paying attention. Right. So I don't know the answer here. My question being, is there something in place to where if you are a felon and you're not allowed to have a firearm that that's routinely checked? I don't think it is routinely checked. See, maybe that's what they should address. Of 773 fel felony cases in, in Hennepin County that allegedly involved a firearm last year, 28% saw a sentence getting carried out. Wow. Well, there's your problem. There's your problem. Uh, they want to end, uh, you know, the, the Mysterians want to end the cycles of mass incarcera incarceration. Well, they want to yeah. shield illegal immigrants. They want to... Uh, they they don't, and Minnesotans who I've I've come to believe just have thrown in the towel. What all they'll need to hear is more laws, and they'll think, oh boy, they're doing something about it. You have the means now to do something about Stupid it, people. Stupid and it's people not are. it's not being done. The uh, what Chris was talking about, I guess this morning was just a setup for the clinic, which is coming up next week. Oh boy. Uh, she was joined this morning by advocates for expungement of setting up for, and listen to this name, the Hennepin County Expungement Clinic and Community Fair. You buy tickets fair. and get some popcorn, maybe a yeah. soda? Uh, February 28th. Where's the fair it's, held? It'll happen the 28th, and uh, it... Uh, well, let's Stand see, up, Franks. Through. <laughs> will aim to expedite the expungement process for adults with felony convictions in Hennepin County who want to rebuild their lives and represent a step toward a better system, according to a spokesperson from Moriarty's office. But can't you already undertake a system by which to expunge your felony? Yeah, that I'm just sure went into just, effect. It just yeah. went into effect, what, two weeks ago, and there's already been a few people released. <clears throat> you get caught committing a crime with a stolen firearm or a firearm that you've rubbed the serial number off and you don't have a permit, how about you liberals establish a sentence? That guy goes away for seven years minimum, no parole. End and of story. And if or, they know that, if they know that, that's a deterrent. Or enforce the current laws. Yeah. Uh, here, Here's a pastor. Uh, I will not... Uh, well, and he lost his daughter to gun violence, so let's keep that in mind. I will not accept the argument that these deaths and trauma associated with them are simply the cost of doing business for the freedom to own a gun, said Pastor Rolf Olson, who lost his daughter to gun violence. Pastor, your concern should be you, you maybe not you, but Minnesotans have elected people who are choosing not to enforce the laws that I wish and hope would have prevented the loss of your daughter. Right. Come on. We have the laws. Apparently, we, are, have, a, we have a proposed bill that would require a lost or stolen gun to be reported right away. Don't we do that? I guess not. If a bad guy finds a gun, he's not going to call the cops. Right. But if he uses that gun to rob you and he's arrested, 10 years minimum. That ends your problem, folks. You want the guns off the street, you got to get the bad guys off the street. And I don't know if you guys follow Walter Hudson, GLer, legislator and uh, former guest, but he played out a scenario responding to this storage law that Kenny just mentioned and basically said, 
if for whatever reason things had changed and this bad guy died at the hands of the Burnsville, can you imagine how all the likes of Walls would have turned on Mm -hmm. the cops in that situation? And that's why we don't like when politicians jump for the microphone and the cameras in the event of a tragedy like this because we know what two-faced liars they are. All of them. I don't trust any of them. No. It's, it's, because we've yeah. witnessed, rid of them. we've witnessed in our time on the air, we've witnessed the growing separation from the rest of us that the third rail has pulled off. That's why Ideas. it's so weird to see them in reality. Yeah. Like Amy yeah. Klobuchar showing up to mourn in Burnsville. Right. Okay, that's fine, Amy. You're, but. We never see you. This was this was your dipping your toe back into Haven't reality. Haven't seen you in over a year. And and or, walls, you know, you were so awkward. This is exactly what you 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 were uncomfortable. I'm. That's my opinion anyway. And then every time that was appearing, people were posting Ellison and Klobuchar at a defund the police rally. Right. But the, one of the points you just made. <clears throat> Things that at the beginning of Garage Logic, when you and Matthew first started doing this, things that you thought were absurd are now our daily lives. Oh, God, we started a mystery as a joke. Yeah. yeah. It was yeah. a joke. Right. Yeah. Well, because you, know, you couldn't make popcorn at the Mayo Clinic because somebody complained about the smell. But and I, I said, Minnesota's the state where absolutely nothing is allowed. It was a joke. Mm hmm. And then also, you were spot on lowest common denominator. We are going to lower our expectations to make everybody the same. But that was before I began to realize the harm being done to children of color by making them less than. No, they don't have to do their homework. Ah! That might be right then, Kenny. All politicians might be two-faced liars because, Joe, you're the guy that freaks out when people make microwave popcorn here. Oh, I do, and thankfully, that is a good point. Thankfully, though, we've moved from that area, and I no longer smell it. <laughs> Who the hell made popcorn? Well, that was terrible. And I, some, I, <clears throat> there were some days when I was I was so miserable during that period of my life that the only way I could cheer myself up was to make some popcorn just to make Joe angry. That's the only thing that made me happy. <laughs> my no, little cubicle you, was right outside the uh, radio did station. Did you agree with uh, me, Chaz? studio there no i didn't mind it i was was just gonna tell the story how you would always come out with your hands in your pocket looking at the floor and go who made vomit that's kenny that's kenny needed some cheering up costco (laughs) deluxe (laughs) box he he was uh, he was so depressed today that he had to make popcorn (laughs) or it was always fun or you feared for the life of whoever heated up some uh, a walleye or some, maybe oh, some yeah. tuna. Uh, some yesterday's tuna. tuna. Yeah. Can I, can I, I'd like to give you Jordy's take on this. Uh, 40% of convicted gun crimes don't get mandatory minimum sentences. And he writes, leftists like gun violence as it justifies more sanctions on gun owners, which is the real objective of gun control. Not enforcing current laws just goes towards proving there are quote marks, not enough gun laws, yeah. as if a tourniquet around the neck is the only possible treatment for a head wound. Yeah. This is this is the game they're playing, and it yeah. plays well with Minnesotans who apparently have given up, and they don't pay attention, and they, they see this Burnsville situation, and they'll think, we need more gun laws, and these people <laughs> respond perfectly to give you more gun laws. We already have them. Joe, I've even heard and seen them say we need more gun laws, restrictions like Chicago, not realizing just how absurd they're being. (laughs) Renewal by Anderson brings us this day in history. Renewal by Anderson, windows, the best, okay? Renewal by Anderson. Oh, love them. They seal those windows tight, from what I hear. Only because they come to us all the way from Lake Las Vegas, Nevada, from the traveling Lymans. On this day... February 21st. Boy, not much happened. On this day... Well, unfortunately, I I didn't read ahead. On this day in 1855, Henderson was incorporated. Oh. (laughs) Joseph R. Brown had settled there in 1852 and later named the town for his aunt, Margaret Brown Henderson, and her son, Andrew. 
Hmm. Lovely little town. That made this day in history. Sure. It's mentioned on the show That's once it. or twice. That's Mostly you wonder, when you don't attend you the car show. you wonder why we stare at our shoes in this right, state. Right. Yeah. The story goes, that, and I, the, the date I want to see uh, to back up the story is the day that the two gay guys moved into town and started cleaning up this little hellhole river rat town and turned it into this awesome little cool berg that it is now. Yeah. Which, what? Uh, evidently, it's due to a, a gay couple that moved what, in Henderson? and said, "Yeah, yeah and Andrew Henderson and said this place is an is that asshole." Where the car show is, yeah, it's every yeah. Tuesday. And, I and it's get such, there. It's such a cool <laughs> town that we, when you drive through it, you turn around and drive through it again because you just—it's so cool. Yeah, you got to head back towards the river. I love the gays who remember Rook. We tried might we did have a on. We did. The, uh, we had some gardeners on the Star Tribune used to do. Did they specifically choose gay gardeners, or just did it turn out that most Pretty of them were? Pretty much most of them were. And there were some gardens in the Star Tribune used to have a gardening feature, and we we just loved it. And yeah. we finally we had the two guys on. The gay and, gardeners. You know, they, they were, were great wonderful. Sports. I I I miss neat gay people who decorate. You know what Royce says, right? I want right? the stereotype back. Yeah, the appreciation <laughs> the appreciation on your block immediately skyrockets when the gay guys move in. Absolutely. Yep. Give me the cliche. Where are the gay guys who decorate? Well, he yep. wanted to Let's sell go his home. here. Wasn't yep. he prepared to sell his home to a lovely gay couple in Golden Valley? Pat wants yeah. to. Yeah. 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 It's just perfect for him. Hey, uh, how you doing there? And finally, on this day, uh, two, two, one. You guys match. <laughs> in 2005, three Minnesota National Guardsmen: David Day of St. Louis Park, Jesse Lotka of Appleton, and Jason Timmerman of Tracy, were killed in Iraq, marking the deadliest day for Minnesota soldiers since Vietnam. Sergeant Lotka or Lotka, I think it's Lotka was credited with saving a fellow guardsman's life and helping evacuate another soldier before being killed by the roadside blast. Jesus. On this day in 2005. Well, um, Thank you. Then that is appropriate to, re, uh, to mention once again our efforts to help out the Frontline Foundation. We have a link on our website that is running right now up through Sunday night where you can go. The Frontline Foundation began as an attempt to help and support our fallen heroes, including law enforcement officers, firefighters, EMS, and the Minnesota National Guard. They provide support to those who died while in the line of duty by giving benefit payments to dependents of fallen first responders. In addition to providing endowment and support for the families of fallen heroes, the Frontline Foundation will underwrite scholarships and training registration costs for frontline personnel, as well as support preparedness training for safety officers in hospitals, schools, and places of worship. You can find that link and the banner ad at garagelogic.com. And here's a, a here's a different reason for giving, hmm. uh, because you get a receipt with your donation. That receipt goes to Linda Keller. Yes, it does. <laughs> your tax preparer, and it helps everybody out. So just uh, we're just asking to make a, an effort. Doesn't matter what you give, just make the effort and help us out here. Is it tax deductible? Yep, exactly. tax, tax debacle. debacle. Sure is. So find that online, garagelogic.com.